Hello, my name is Father Seamus Hogan. I'm a faculty member at St. Augustine Seminary in Toronto. Today I'm going to be speaking with Cardinal Thomas Collins, Archbishop of Toronto, about his new pastoral letter on the Sacred Heart of Jesus. That letter is called Heart Speaks to Heart. Welcome, Your Eminence. It's great to be here, Father Seamus. You know, you spend a lot of time in your letter discussing symbolism, the symbolism of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In an era where we are always um, surrounded by images and screens, why are symbols still important? Well, symbols are very important because we're, we're human. We're, we're earthly people and we're not angels. In many ways, we're not angels. We're, we're people of this earth. And therefore, we, we even think in terms of symbols. They help us to see beyond what is just in front of our eyes. And so symbols have always been very important. They're also very important in communication. Uh, when a, a speaker uses symbols or images, uh, people can get a grip on what he's talking about. If you just talk in abstractions on and on and on, it bores people and they don't, they don't get the point. That's why our Lord talked about mustard seeds and fish and nets and things like banquets and things like that, because it, it helps us to understand. And we have always, uh, in the Catholic Church and the whole Christian tradition, we've always been deeply uh, connected to symbols. They help us understand and they help us communicate. And in that we're following Jesus. That's very, very important. Mm. And I think one of the great symbols, of course, is the sacred heart of Jesus. We could say uh, the love of Jesus, which is what mainly it means, uh, but that's a, a, a kind of an abstraction. To understand, to understand more deeply about the love and to communicate it, we follow the Bible and using the image of the sacred heart. Right from the Gospel of John, where the, the heart of Christ is there pierced on Calvary, uh, we, we see the Lord saying to us, you know, come to me, all you labor and overburdened, and I will give you peace, for I am gentle and humble of heart. It's the heart of Christ that really gives us life. And when we look at the symbol of the Sacred Heart as it's developed over time, um, you know, been more filled in and more developed so that we can understand better, is really marvelous. Because first of all, you start with the heart. <laughs> it's very basic, the heart. And even in our, our secular world, on Valentine's Day, we always think of you know, cards with hearts on them. It means love. Not a kind of a love that goes here and there, a love that's a mere emotion. The heart is steady. It's hidden. It keeps us alive. It's faithful. When our heart is not faithful, we're having a heart attack. So that's not what we want. But that steady, steady love, that's the love we want in our life with our friends, with those in our family, and certainly the love of God for us. So it starts with the heart. But the heart of Christ is pierced, we know, in the Gospel of John, we hear that especially on Calvary. He suffers for us, and that's why we also have the crown of thorns around the image of the Sacred Heart. And we, we see that even one of the mysteries of the Rosary, the crown of thorns. If we're going to love others, we can't just do it as a kind of intellectual thing, just head to head. It's got to be heart to heart. It's got to have that connection. And often it involves suffering for others, which is why we have the cross on top because it's sacrificial love. It's not a false love that's me, 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 you know, going inward, you know, the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. It's the greater love than this no man hath that he give his life for another. And so that's what we have in the cross of Christ. It is the basic symbol of our faith. That's what love really is. And then we see flames and glory all around it because that kind of love is glorious. It's remarkable. It's, it's not spectacular. It's usually day-to-day, -day, simple loving, helping people, but it is glorious because it is loving other people faithfully day by day. And that's what the Sacred Heart is all about. It's such a powerful symbol, as you said, with the pierced heart, with the crown of thorns, with the cross, with the flames. I mean, it's almost like um, a, a synthesis, you could almost say, of all Christian devotion. So it's yes. really, really quite powerful. And I think to myself, in an age and a society where we have technological isolation, yeah. where we uh, are all seem to be so separated, unfortunately, at the moment, how, how does that symbol of the Sacred Heart speak to this culture? How, how can it inspire each of us, perhaps, to reach out a little bit more, to, to try to love one another more in the midst of this, as I said, 
well, I think you even mentioned in your pastoral letter, a kind of technological isolation. No, that's very true. We are in a world where we're, we're all locked up on our little machines, you know, looking like this, you know, we're all in our separate little worlds. And I remember once I was at a meeting of all things of Catholic education, we, were, we had just had a break in the meeting. So at that moment, we all took out our little phones and we're all absent to those who are present and sort of digitally present to people who are absent. That's no way to live. It's very wise that in the uh, St. Augustine Seminary uh, in the spiritual year, uh, there is a media fast. So that uh, for most of the, the week, we just are called to relate to other people, to God, face to face. And so I think in our technological age, we can become very isolated. Uh, you know, we, we have all these friends, but digital friends is not friendship of the deep lasting kind. It's a kind of an invitation of friendship, sort of like fake. Uh, it's there, but it's not real. And, and so the heart and the sacred heart of Jesus speaks to us of personal relational love. And th there's a great book. I've got a whole bunch of little books here. I always do. There's a great book by a writer called Dietrich von Hildebrand called The Heart. And this guy is an amazing writer. He wrote this book very profound on the need to be not just the head or the will, but the heart. He wrote it when he was fleeing from the Nazis. He was, he was being you know, persecuted. He was speaking up for the love, true love, in a hateful regime where people were being imprisoned. And, and we're kind of sometimes imprisoned in our own little digital worlds. And so I think the wisdom of this thing of the heart, and it ends off with the sacred heart of Jesus, is needed more now than ever. Uh, you know, I sometimes think that we can, when we see... Uh, like we see a clock like this. This is my old little clock, a little cheap little clock. Uh, we, we can tell the time by where it is, where the, the hand has been and where it's going. Where, tell where we are in terms of where we've been and where we're going. It's, it's a real relation. And if you have a little clock like, like this little one on my wrist, um, it's just numbers. They flick, flick, flick. They're all separated. We've got to be more like an analog clock. We've got to be relating to one another personally, deeply, not just little digital moments. A lot of lonely people, a lot of lonely people. Um, and the heart speaks to coming together with real love. And it, and it makes me think, you know, I think sometimes people are lonely because perhaps in some ways they even lack a, a very personal and dynamic relationship with Jesus Christ. So I think, yes. you know, our world is so loud. And as you say, distracting with all these screens, you used a few examples there. Um, how can we recapture, do you think, the silence that is so necessary and essential for prayer? How do you think we can do that, Your Eminence? Well, we, we, we do need that because we're always being distracted. We're always... Uh, trying to see what's, uh, you know, like what's happening. We're always checking our mail and stuff like that. Well, we're, we're like being torn in many directions. Uh, it's like, I think, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Stephen Leacock said he ran out of the house, hopped in, uh, on a horse and ran off in several different directions. So we're, we're, we all tend to be that way. But purity of heart is to will one thing. I think it was Kierkegaard, somebody who said that, if we really are pure of heart, we are simple. Because God is simple. And so if I've always got this buzz in my mind, uh, there's something, if I need that all the time, there's something wrong. I remember when I was a seminarian a couple of years ago, I was a counselor at, a, at Camp Rabaf, a camp uh, for little children at, uh, in, in my diocese of Hamilton. I remember walking into the bunkhouse where the counselors were staying, and a guy came in, he turned on his music, so it's loud, and, and then he walked out. And I thought, why did he do that? Well, I think he did it because he felt he had to have this, know it's going, this kind of this buzz, or he couldn't feel at peace. Well, that's not where we find our peace. It's in the silence of the heart. That's why it's good to make retreats too. And it's why it's also good uh, to spend every day a little quiet time, preferably before our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament. And that's very closely connected as well to devotion to the Sacred Heart. So silence is needed. Thank you very much, Your, Your Eminence. Thank you so much uh, for this today. Uh, to read Cardinal Collins's pastoral letter titled Heart Speaks to Heart, go to www.archtoronto.org. There you'll see many more Sacred Heart of Jesus resources. 
including the Cardinal reading the pastoral letter and interviews featuring myself and the Cardinal. Thank you for watching everyone. Take care.